All right, it happened. Newbie lost to evil geniuses. And I guess what sucks more for that loss is just that I could tell that Newbie just was not playing very well. They were so sloppy, um, they were going in, they were just organized, and it really felt like they fell apart very quickly. Like yeah, usually when a couple bad ganks happen or if their early game sucks, then sometimes you get really discouraged. And even though it did seem like, you know, they were like not going to surrender because it's a major, you need to try till the very end. But even though they kept playing, they were just maybe too far behind at some points, but they also just didn't look like they were very mentally uh, still focused. So yeah, I'm really disappointed because <laughs> Like I mentioned, Virtus Pro played EG at one of the last tournaments, and I was all like, Virtus Pro is way above EG in terms of like performance recently, so I was expecting it to be not so stompy, but it kind of was last time. These two games were extremely stompy. Um, two games were done within an hour and a half, and in Dota, that just doesn't happen. Happy Friday! Happy Friday! I am so happy <laughs> that it's Friday and I get a paycheck on Monday. So, ugh. I mean, I was really concerned that I wouldn't get one until next month. Um, my current company, they only give paychecks monthly, which is so unusual. Like, I've never worked at a company that did that. But I do admit, I think I prefer monthly because it feels really nice when you get all of your money at once and then you're able to budget it that way. So, maybe having this pay structure can possibly make it easier for me to budget my money properly because I have been very poor at doing that. Yeah, anyways, I, I get to go to work on a loss. Hi, it is the end of my longish lunch today. I went home, did a quick walk with Riley because it's windy and it's cold today. And sorry, I'm, my finger is like dry and the freaking skin is peeling and I'm terrible for not wearing lotion, but I fucking hate the sticky feeling. But anyways, um, I, uh, I picked up a little bubble tea because, you know, Wow, did they, they, I think they did. Anyways, yeah, it's just so, it's kind of close from here, so it's always a temptation, but I think this is the first time I've got it this week, I think. But anyways, I am about to head back into the office. I'm in the parking lot right now. They actually have a happy hour at three o'clock, and I figured I'll go for a short while. Like, I don't want to stay there for more than an hour if possible. I'll see how things are going, but... I figured I might as well go to that instead of staying here and not doing anything because I still haven't really gotten any tasks so I'm kind of like fucking around half the time. I just hope that the people are relatively interesting so that I'm not uh, suffering, but they should be okay. <laughs> okay, so let me say first that I am probably slightly, slightly buzzed from earlier. So I just got back from happy hour. Um, I left the office at three o'clock and I got there and stayed until, what time is it? It's 7.05 right now. So I stayed for roughly three and a half hours. And the main reason I stayed so long is because I had some beer and I was kind of afraid to drive because I'm the type of person that's competitive when drinking. So I drink very quickly. I've also been that type of person that if I have a drink in front of me, I always keep sipping until it's done. Plus, I have like a little bit of 
internal pride when I finish a beer before someone else is very stupid. It's like I have a competition with people and they don't know about it, but I'm that type of person, so I tend to drink fast. I also drank more than I probably should have if I wanted to leave sooner, so I just kind of hung around until I felt like it was subsiding. I was a little nervous while driving, but I, uh, I think I was relatively alert regardless. But it's 7 o'clock, and it is early to sleep, but I get tired from drinking, so I actually might just straight up go to sleep because the first games are on at 3 in the morning. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about my experience just because I don't know if people, sometimes I feel like people are not aware as to how introverted I am, but this is the first time I have spent time with people. Uh, my parents don't count. They were like last week or two weeks ago, but this is the first time I've spent time with a group of people in a long time. So I mean, I've had some team lunches at my last job, but those weren't, those felt a little different than this. This is kind of like voluntary after work kind of thing. But I guess my issue with these gatherings is just that I honestly think that very few of these people, oh, puppers. I just honestly feel like very few of these people are actually people I feel like I could connect well with on a deep personal level. And I know that you can't expect relationships like this from anybody you meet, but that's the relationship I prefer. So if I'm spending like, if I'm spending like three hours at some brewery talking to them and getting to know them, and there are certain people right off the bat, like after a few things I discuss with them, I can just tell right away whether it's like, if they're very extroverted, I kind of know immediately that like, we're just, we have nothing in common. So we have like those type of people who like to go to Vegas and like to go to pool parties and they like to go to clubs and there's nothing wrong with that, but I have no interest in that. So like, we can't be friends because we're not gonna have, be interested in the same type of stuff. So I just don't entirely see the purpose in spending my time talking to them and getting to know them. Maybe that's not the best, maybe that's not the best perspective to have, but I don't know. That's just how I think. So even though I do feel like I enjoyed my time there, I probably would have preferred to leave sooner. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe someone can tell me what the purpose of these things really are for, but I'm not saying I regret it. I'm just saying like, I kind of just don't understand, I suppose. But uh, I definitely feel kind of tired right now because I had, I had a good amount of beer, I guess. That's another thing. I'm not a big fan of drinking. I don't really drink. I don't think I'm a big fan of feeling buzzed. I don't really like, having my senses altered. I just, um, I think when that happens, I just feel weak or incapable of something and I'm not a big fan of that feeling. Plus, I don't like feeling like that buzz feeling contributes to me acting uh, silly or possibly foolish, maybe. I'd say mostly I'm a social drinker, but for the most part, I would just prefer not to because I like, I really enjoy being sober. I think that is the best feeling to have. So sometimes drinking, I only do it because people are doing it to be social, but I would never drink to ever be drunk ever again. I am probably gonna get ready for bed because I cannot wait for more Dota tomorrow. Like that's kind of the thing about having these gatherings. I just can't relate to a lot of these people. So they would be talking about studio films like Black Panther and partying and going out and bar hopping. I cannot contribute to any of those topics. And I also don't like, I don't like at all to fake this um, studio film hype train. So Black Panther, I know that there's a lot of like positive reviews for that. A lot of people are saying it's so good. It's like one of the best Marvel movies, but you hear that all the time that the next Marvel movie is the best Marvel movie. And I know for a fact that if I watched that movie, I wouldn't like it. So I don't like to pretend either that I have interest in it. So when they asked me 
what type of movies I watch. I'm like, independent films? And I told them about Wind River and Call Me By Your Name and nobody heard of them, so. Uh, <laughs> oh well, but I, I don't fake anything to try to fit in, that's not who I am. So if they don't know about it, then whatever. I can't contribute to the conversation. That's probably why I would only prefer to go out to these gatherings if I know these people very well. That way I know for sure that I would have something to discuss with them. But yes, anyways, enough rambling. I am going to sleep and I will set an alarm for 3 a.m. It's time and I am nervous. I have some tea and some food on the side, a meal, so let's hope that Virtus Pro prepared properly for this matchup. Look at them Russians, so tasty. Because they want to be able to maintain control of that ancient stack, of that farming triangle, and be able to see any rotations when VP go for the well, VP are pushing the T1 tower, they're not actually contesting the stack. Artizi started Dying work on it, but it's awesome very, time. very it's slow. So this will probably be our first major engagement down. of the game. As everyone's grouped up, Rod Radiant's just looking for the Burrow Strike top around top. the back. He's got the help from the Omni Knight, and what a big oh. Burrow Strike catching to Samel's Avalanche tries to create some space. Crit, Nightmare up, testing touches are available, but the Fiend's Group holding Samel in position. They toss him deeper under the Tier 2 tower, but it's okay when VP are in such force. Standing when they're not going to get the better fight. Smoke on smoke. Roger gonna walk right into the back of Fear and he blink Burrow strikes forward. Samael blink the wrong direction, trying to be the initiator. Avalanche onto Solo, but here comes your call down. Solo gets so much more life back from the brain sap and the one charges. They can't even kill him. Fear and Samael, they're so low. And the fiend script, Fear can't go anywhere. Two big calls from EG will go down. Misery will join them in the afterlife. Still finding his space. Oh, and they're just gonna boldly go straight to Roshan. There was no vision oh, from EG to know about this. The observers and sentries are down, and it looks like EG are not aware they're going to smoke up themselves, but who do they fight? The Sandstorming SK is the only thing they're really going to reveal. Now they find the base. Avalanche toss. They get the burst combination on him, but then the Barra Strike on the other side. Fear and Arteezy, they want to get into this mess, but VP have just Delta split out. They still have that Aegis, the Immortal Raider fight on the back of no one, and Arteezy Stone Gates is gone. Epi and the double Barra Strike, catching Misery too. This will be a triple kill for Ramsey's. And maybe even an ultra as a male will fall. Ramses takes the ultra kill. EG dead for so long without buybacks. It's the north and Misery needs to try and slow him down as best he can, but he can't survive it. There's just so much damage. Now it's easy. The Fiend Grip is up. Misery needs up now, but the bar is strike. Roger catches both of them down. Evil Genius is in a world of hurt. Don't give up. Never surrender. But EG, they'll surrender. VP won game one and I'm so proud of them because they played an excellent fuck it's so loud <laughs> they played an excellent game like throughout early game they did amazingly good rotations they won most of the laning stage they were farming very well and then they used that advantage to like really get map advantage um, I didn't see them fuck up too drastically, and it just felt like really, really solid play throughout the entire game. So, just feeling really proud of like how well they played, and I'm really hoping they carry that into an easy 2-0. Let's go. <laughs> played in the late game, Glimpse, uh, Samael's in trouble. Uh, in fact, Samael, Misery, wants to help him. A quick nightmare will buy some time. The Necrobooks at least got off, allowing the Dragon to start, and the oh, Fiend no! no! Roger, he'll get the song of the siren up. Three caught out. Crit wants to help out with an echo stop, but can it actually do enough? The lane is bouncing through the wall underneath the tower. Arteezy thunders onto Ramsey's. He has enough life to stand his ground. That BKB timing is huge. Ramsey's caught on the wrong side of the track. Samael is there to help get the kill. Remember, they'll have to do it again. The Aegis the Immortal will give him a second life. Crit comes in for the stomp. Pasha, he's jumped in for his own stomp. The roar is on Death Prophet. They have to hold her in position as the spill damage goes out. Killing Ramsey's lowering Pasha, but no one jumps inside the base. No, it's a a triple kill for him. He'll go for more. Rearm and pop won't happen, but three heroes. Yeah, well, Fear's gonna fall. An ultra kill for the Tinker, no one. Double blink. Touch you. Yep. You got blink on Terra, blink on blink on DK. The timing of your BKBs are also critically important for EG. 
Lincolns has already cracked on the Death Prophet. Fear jumps in with the Fiend's Grip. They want to kill him off. Can they actually bring down this Death Prophet with the ET Splitter? It won't happen. Defensive Fuel Scepter up and the Song of the Siren actually cancelling off a lot of the damage of the Exorcism. Now allowing Fear to try and turn and fight. She's already been triggered terribly. Needs to swap his life. He's still silenced. Where is that Sunder? It doesn't come. Arteezy is down for a full minute without buying back an EG on the retreat. Back to the tier four towers, but they want to go deeper. Ramsey's aggressive blinking forward. Shamail dropping down low. The ET once again just cannot stop enough. The BP are on a rampage, almost under the fountain, hunting these kills of evil geniuses. And the storm is down again with the laser. They can't attack. They can't fight back. All they can do is Chris die, evil insane. geniuses. There's just buybacks galore. Crick can do some work right now. Which one's gonna break first? EG, now the smoke will break. They jump in deep and Arteezy straight up BKB. The song of the siren actually isolated solo so they can keep fighting. Ramsey's next target inside the base, but with the BKBs wearing off, where do you go next? The lasers from Tinker. This will cause problems. The Doombringer stands his ground against Crit. Arteezy still wants something to fight, but he keeps getting lasered. Silence up again. No more Thunder, no more Artur. And they'll go for even more with the DK down. He was doomed up. Nothing can be done too many heroes for eg are on the sideline and this just may be the game this may be Burda's pro's victory and ticket into the semi-final as down goes all of eg and gg indeed Burda's pro have done it 2-1 against evil geniuses okay dota 2 update because i kind of took a break from recording after every game but i am so happy to say that vp beat EG, the third game was actually incredible. It was so well played by VP and maybe if I have time and motivation later, I might download that game to watch because it was so good. Maybe I will include clips in this video. Actually, I do feel like I would want to try to do that a little more just because um, I think it also helps to like Whenever I watched these vlogs again, I could see some of the plays that happened during these events. It is the third game for Liquid versus VG right now. Right after the game, I am going to head out to eat dim sum with Shane right away. Hopefully we can beat the other game starting. Yeah, so I haven't had dim sum since my parents, but that place is pretty good. And I'm really excited to eat more Chinese food. So we're gonna do that. And you know, if the game starts while we're there, I told him to bring his laptop and we can tether someone's phone and watch the games there. <laughs> Whatever, right? Those are games I do not want to miss because it is VP versus Fnatic. And they have been doing pretty well. I really want to see them succeed. So I got to be there to watch. I did take a short nap earlier between the first and second series, like an hour and a half, I guess. So I feel pretty okay right now. All right. And, um... It seems that Shane is going to be getting his Siberian Husky puppy at the beginning of April. So that's going to be so exciting for him. Uh, I feel like, you know, at a certain point, a dog can definitely enhance your life if you put in the time and effort. So with my experience with Riley, I'm really interested to see what his training is going to be like with his puppy and how things will go when he knows everything up front and it's also going to be cool to see someone else learn dog training <laughs> learn the use of e-collars and stuff today has been an amazing day vp won both of their series and now they are in the grand finals tomorrow playing a best of five against vg which is a chinese team so vg have been looking crazy crazy strong so this will be in, it'll be such a good grand finals. I'm positive of it. I feel like VP haven't been performing as well as they should lately. So they made their roster swap and it just feels so good to be rooting for them and to see them play such clean, amazing Dota. They played so well today. And uh, I just, I'm just so happy for them. I don't know if anybody else does but like sometimes when I watch something that I'm very much attached to and I see them succeed and do well sometimes I get emotional on my end because I'm just trying to envision like how proud they are how happy they are with their teamwork and just like the team vibe and energy like they're very they're probably very excited and just 
happy with their progress. So seeing them do very well today um, makes me feel a little emotional for them as a team. Hi, so right now it's 3 p.m. I did a short workout, which is the first time I've exercised since Monday because I've been too busy sleeping or watching Dota. Um, I walked by one more time. It's a pretty nice day, although this week it has been in the 60s or 50s. So I haven't been riding. I don't really want to ride when it's cold. I mean, it feels okay, but with the wind, it's just not going to be. So I don't know if I want to take the risk. I have been enjoying Dota so much this pro circuit that or I was originally thinking of potentially taking a road trip with Riley to Colorado for vacation this year but I kind of changed my mind I uh, never have been to TI the international in Seattle before and I have been watching pro Dota since a while four to five years now so I think it's time that I try to make it this year. Um, it, the event is held in August. I'm kind of excited but anxious at the same time because I'm gonna try to bring Riley with me. I think my plan is to drive there. I looked on the map from my address to like Seattle in general, it seems like 19 and a half hours. So maybe that's like a two to three day drive, depending on how much I do per day. I would just take her with me. I would figure something out for the cats, maybe automatic feeders, or I could ask some of the check on them for me if I have that option. But I really do think that it's time to go <laughs> because people might think that it's kind of crazy that I want to take Riley with me, but I don't think it would be that complicated. Um, there's always, downtime in between games for you to get up and do stuff uh, around the arena or get food so I could always just briefly stop back at the hotel and just walk her and if I ever needed to she could definitely go eight hours so it would honestly be the same as if I went to work it's just that I'm in Seattle instead because if I didn't live close to work, I would be having her in there for an eight hour work day. So this doesn't seem that much different. I would probably just bring, I would buy a camera for her first of all, just because um, different place, different environment. So if I create her while I'm gone, she might be a little anxious in the beginning. So I would just use a camera to try to see what her reaction is like and then also to keep an eye on her. I would, of course, bring a crate. Um, it would be easier, I guess, to drive there. That way I could just put everything I need for her in my car, <sighs> do a little road trip. Um, I don't usually vacation, so it would be exciting also to use my vacation days for an actual vacation instead of me just fucking around at home, which is what I've always done. So I don't know when the tickets plan on going on sale. I would imagine within the next three months, but you never know with Valve, they're pretty random. It's kind of exciting now that I've been thinking about it. Yeah, by August, I feel like it's definitely possible for me to save up for this trip. It's thrilling and it's something to really, really look forward to because this year seems to be shaping up to be an amazing TI, especially with the way the teams are performing. Tomorrow is the playoffs for third place and then finals. I am feeling rather tired, so I think I'm going to just read, edit, maybe watch a movie, or nap. I don't know. I didn't really even talk about dim sum. <laughs> dim sum was good, but I don't know what's wrong with Asian places. I can't stand their service. It's so bad. Um, me and Shane were there for like an hour maybe more and we ordered we placed our order very quickly after we arrived so it felt kind of pathetic and very irritating to have the food take so long a lot of the dim sum dishes are not complicated to cook i can imagine so i just never like the service or experience that i get when I happen to go to some Chinese restaurant. I don't know if I would go there again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the experience is sometimes more important than the food. So 
if they take forever and they charge five dollars for tea which is so freaking much then i would probably aim to avoid that place i hope everyone's having a great weekend i'm a little dead right now so forgive me being very dull yeah i'm gonna close this out here now i have something exciting to look forward to plan out my ti trip I think I'm actually going to really, really try to plan this out. I like organizing, so it should be a lot of fun. <laughs>